So we need to know about Walter Tull before we start. For those of you to whom the name is new, um, Walter Tull was the first black officer in the British Army. The people around him, his men, had huge respect for him because he was outstanding. And in 1918, they had gone forward and he had been leading his men as usual. And he'd been shot and killed. The terrible story for me is this, that he was recommended for a military cross. But in those days, it seems, you couldn't be awarded a military cross posthumously. Walter Tull was the kind of the grit, the little bit that everything else started to form itself around. And it became a much wider world than just the Walter Tull story. As amazing as it is, it became something else. And as is his gift, he makes it extremely relevant and contemporary by bringing it absolutely up to date. I was born in 1943. And the first time I really knew that people died in wars um, was really because of a photograph. And there's a photograph in this book, which is very important. It's a photograph of my uncle, my uncle Peter, who was shot down in the RAF and killed when he was 21. I think everyone was told roughly the same story. That this bomber that he was in had been hit. The pilot had been mortally wounded. And my uncle, who was a navigator, not a pilot, took the controls told the other people to jump out of the plane and he tried to land the plane. Because I'd had a biography written about my life, she looked into our family myths. And then what was discovered was that he didn't die this way at all. What happened was that his plane crashed on takeoff. So then you ask yourself the question, at what point did this seemingly pointless waste of life transform itself into the kind of tale you could tell little children growing up? to make some sort of sense of it. And this kind of hiding of things and creating of tales um, has always fascinated me. And then I'm going to invite Johnson up, if I may, to talk to you about real life, not fiction. I was leading the convoy in my platoon of five vehicles, and I realized I was in the middle of an ambush. The vehicle was on fire. I don't know if anyone in the vehicle was alive, so I just ran through the fire. Run up the vehicle, run through the fire, and the first person I saw was my boss. I grabbed him by his head, his helmet, pulled him out, put him on my back, went through the fire, gave him into safety, come back again, do the same thing with the gunner, into safety, and then I went around the other five vehicles, four vehicles, and get all the casualties into safety. So for me to be here tonight, it's, it's a blessing. But most of all, tonight I'm wearing my Victoria Cross, which I was awarded in 2005 for, for my action in 2004 with pride knowing that you represent 42 soldiers' life that I contribute towards. I, I think myself, I mean, having listened this evening particularly, it simply confirmed to me that what Alan Bennett said is right. That we're only here to pass it on. <laughs> That's it. Whether we're teachers, soldiers, and all you do as a parent, as a grandparent, as a writer, as an illustrator, it seems to me, is to pass on what you know and what you care about. Walter Tull would have had a story to tell um, of the same kind of, I think heroism is the wrong word. I can't, I, courage will do for me. He would have had this tale to tell. The fact that you're wearing that medal, Johnson, is extraordinary. It's a joy and it's an honor to have had you here. It's made the celebration of this book and the celebration of Walter Tull's life and if he was sitting here, and I hope he's here in spirit, he will know that we've moved on. He absolutely will know that. So what can I say except bravo and thank you. Thank you so much.